Today, we are going to see how images are formed by lenses with the help of ray diagrams. So, what are ray diagrams? A ray diagram tells us about the nature, size, and location of images formed by a lens. But before we start, let's look at some terms that we need to know about ray diagrams and lenses. Let's use a convex lens to illustrate. The center of the lens is known as the optical center. It is denoted by O. The horizontal line passing through the optical center is the principal axis. When the rays of light traveling parallel to the principal axis pass through a convex lens, they converge at a single point on the principal axis. This point is called the principal focus. It's denoted by a capital F. The distance between the center of the lens and the focal point is called the focal length. This is denoted by a small f. If the lens is symmetrical, both the focal point and focal length will be at the same point on either side. Let's take a closer look now at the ray diagrams for both lenses. When a ray of light travels parallel to the principal axis, it refracts and passes through the focal point on the other side of the convex lens. However, when the same ray passes through the concave lens, it diverges, and its refraction can be traced back to the focal point. When a ray of light passes through the optical center of the convex or concave lens, it does not refract after passing through it. Let's look at a ray of light that passes through the principal focus. After going through the lens, it refracts and becomes parallel to the principal axis. These ray diagrams summarize the rules of refraction for three basic scenarios. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, when the incident ray passes through the optical center, and when the incident ray passes through the focal point. Let's use a candle as an object and change its distance from the lens to see how these rules work. Remember, O is the optical center, F is the focal point, and 2F is twice the focal length. Let's place a candle beyond 2F behind the lens. Draw a ray from the top of the candle refracting through the lens and passing through the focal point. The second ray will go through the optical center without refracting. As a result, a real, inverted, and smaller image will form where these rays meet. But what is a real image? A real image occurs where rays converge whereas a virtual image occurs where rays only appear to converge. Let's take a closer look at other cases and see. Now let's place the candle at 2F and see what happens. You'll notice the rays go through a similar refraction. However, they converge at a different distance. In this case, at 2F on the other side, where a real and inverted image of the same size will form. However, if the candle is placed between F and 2F of the convex lens, the rays of light will converge beyond 2F on the other side of the lens. The image formed will be real, inverted, and much larger in size compared to the object. But what if the candle is placed at point F? Well, the rays of light will become parallel after refracting through the convex lens and will form an image at infinity. The image is real, inverted, and greatly magnified. Placing this candle any closer will result in the rays diverging as they refract through the lens. It will form a large image that is virtual and behind the lens. But what about a concave lens? The rays always diverge, so the emerging rays do not actually get to meet. Thus, a real image is never formed. If we place the candle beyond the focal point, the rays will leave from the top of the candle through the lens and refract. The image, however, 
will be formed on the same side between F and O. We can see this as we trace back the refracted ray. A virtual image is formed that will be smaller than the object. Let's summarize what we have learned in this video. Ray diagrams help show image formation by tracing the path of light rays through different lenses. A real image occurs where rays converge. A virtual image occurs where rays only appear to converge.